Hello, friend. Welcome back to Acre Homestead. <laughs> oh, Josh is working from home today because, oh, let me show you. I was not expecting to wake up to this this morning. It has snowed. It's starting to melt off now. The girls are on my deck, which I'm not thrilled about, but they're not thrilled about the snow either. My goal today was to go out into the garden and actually work on those garden beds for the first time with you and with me. It's just the first time we were gonna be out there working on the garden. Well, Mother Nature had other plans and I am not going to go out there in that grossness today. So snow days mean baking days and time spent inside. So I have something that I have been dreading dealing with for about two weeks since I noticed it. But first, what we're gonna do before we go out, it's the freeze dryer. I have done something to the freeze dryer that is not ideal and I didn't realize it and then I've been dreading putting it off and today just seems like a good day to deal with it because what better thing to do on a snow day than first do some really yummy baking. We are gonna make some more cookie bars. I've been wanting to make these for a long time. I printed this recipe off January 9th, but I didn't have the ingredients and I happen to have the ingredients today. So we're gonna do that. We are also going to get dinner going in the crock pot. So we need to go do some grocery shopping downstairs in order to get the ingredients for dinner as well. Josh is a computer programmer, if you ever wondered. That's why he has the flexibility of working from home quite often. And I really like that. So I'm gonna do some grocery shopping. What I was thinking, since it's snowy and gross, let's make the easiest dinner possible. Let's make some taco soup in the crock pot. This is one of the <laughs> only things I like to use my crock pot for. I just grabbed some chicken. We're gonna grab some homegrown, home canned black beans. What else do we need? We'll grab a jar of salsa. This is from 2021's garden. That's got tomatoes and onions and peppers in it. This is my go-to really easy dump everything in a pot and call it a day. And I like that this recipe uses up a ton of ingredients that I have home canned or home preserved or home grown. And it just, it's kind of a gift to myself to be able to make a recipe like this because my previous self's efforts are making tonight's dinner extremely, extremely easy. So we're gonna get everything in our basket and bring it upstairs. One really cool thing that I just found at the grocery store, I ran in there to grab a couple things the other day. And one thing I like to do almost any time I go to the grocery store, if I have a few minutes, is look at the clearance section. Most of the time I don't find anything good, but when I do, I usually score really big. So I got 10 bags of organic chips marked down from $3 to 90 cents. I didn't take them all. I only took 10 bags. There was probably 40 or 50 bags. They're still in date. So for less than $10, I got 10 bags of organic chips. I saved myself a ton of money. So I went ahead and stocked up and now I have my pantry shelf full of chips. So I'm not gonna need to buy chips for a long time and I just scored and saved myself a ton of money. So I think I got everything I need for dinner tonight. This is one of the easiest recipes I have in my arsenal because the only thing that we have to do today to prep for this meal is dice one onion. I love keeping diced onion in my freezer. I don't have any. If I did, I wouldn't even have to go through this step. I'm gonna get this diced up real quick. I get this in the compost. Now the easy part, putting it in the crock pot. In the crock pot, I'm gonna start with some peppers. These are peppers from 2021 that I need to preserve up. I'm almost out of my peppers from 2022, but I wanna to try to use these up first. So we're gonna put maybe the equivalent of about one pepper in there. I have some frozen corn. This is my last packet of frozen corn that I preserved from this last summer. Get that in there. I'm gonna turn this on high so that can start to defrost. And this is where it gets really easy. We've got one quart of homemade home canned chicken broth. A 
couple jars of beans. I have, I did grab a thing of pinto beans as well. Here's some chicken, so we didn't even have to thaw or cook chicken for this. I'm gonna put the juice from the beans in here. I'm not gonna rinse them because I like how it thickens up the taco soup. Put that in there. Same with the pinto beans. We're gonna put the whole jar in there. Our jar of salsa. Maybe we'll put about half of that in there. And then our chicken with the broth and everything. Here I have some frozen garlic from last year's garden that I keep in the freezer. It's pre-diced in little pucks, makes it so easy. I'm gonna add a few more things. We have some dried onion from, ooh, a lot of dried onion, I guess. That's from 2021's garden. I'm gonna put a whole bunch of freeze-dried cilantro in here. One of my favorite uses of a freeze-dryer are herbs. It preserves the flavor incredibly well. And we'll put some cumin. And this is getting pretty full. Coriander, some paprika, a pinch of red pepper, maybe two, some salt, pepper, and I almost forgot our onion. I think I'm only gonna put half that onion in there because there's onions in the salsa and there's onions in those dried onions, obviously, that I put in there. So I'll use the rest of that onion for something else because this pot is getting pretty full. It will cook down. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a mix. We still have some frozen items in there, so it's gonna take a little bit for those peppers and onions, or peppers and corn to thaw. I'm gonna put the lid on and dinner's done. Now I'm gonna rinse these jars out. I love when I open so many jars. We opened five jars, we emptied four of them. That means that my effort of putting the food in the jars paid off because I'm actually using it. I have heard from a few of you that say once you can something, you have a hard time using it for whatever reason, whether you enjoy looking at it in your pantry, it gives you security that you have it there. But the best thing is I can refill this and it means that my effort of locally sourcing everything. This is from a local farmer. This corn, these peppers are from a local farmer. The broth is from chickens that are from a pasture raised farm. The beans I grew myself, well not the pinto beans. Maybe one day I will have homegrown pinto beans that I will have preserved up. Not today though, but the black beans I grew and preserved, which I think is an absolute amazing accomplishment. So I'm gonna get these back in the freezer and we have dinner done in a matter of, that didn't even take five minutes to open all that. And I don't even have to shred cheddar cheese for dinner tonight. I'm gonna let this thaw. This is cheddar cheese. We uh, shred it up, put it in a silicone bag, it froze. It thaws beautifully. And to top our taco soup, we'll have chips, cheese, and sour cream. Getting a few ingredients out to make our s'more cookie bars. I think I told you that, that we're making some more cookie bars. We're gonna have those bake while we go out and deal with the freeze dryer that I'm dreading. I think I'm gonna put rubber bands on these before I stick them back in the freezer. I absolutely love using a food saver to preserve peppers. These peppers are in beautiful shape and they've been in my freezer for since 2021, summer of 2021 and they keep really well. I would have ideally used these up already, but I kind of forgot they were down there until we organized the freezer. But I haven't come up with a really good way of resealing them. So if you guys have a good solution for that, for what you do when you open something from a food saver, this is the first time I'm trying this method where I'm just putting some rubber bands around it. I will try to make an effort to go through this quickly in the freezer because it's not sealed anymore. But if you guys have a good solution for that, I would, I'm all ears. All right, so let's get going on these s'more cookie bars. I need to preheat the oven 
to 350 degrees. Oh, we also need to get the garlic in the oven, or the garlic in the freezer. Now, I did not read through this recipe yet, even though it's been printed off for, what is it, January, February, March, April, three months. But I do know I have all the ingredients. I just haven't read through to see what order things need to go. Do you ever sit there and read something and then realize halfway through you weren't really reading it at all? Well, I just did that about three times to this. So I now understand after the fourth time what I need to do. So the first thing I need to do is melt half a cup of butter in a bowl and we do not need a mixer or anything to make this so this is going to be pretty easy I think and hopefully it will look pretty impressive. So we're going to get this in the microwave. I also want to try our kombucha. This is our kombucha. It's strawberry flavored. We put some freeze dried strawberries in here and this is a second ferment. It's been going for two days and I like a really carbonated kombucha so we should open this and see how it is if it's if it's it said not to boil that butter it said just to melt it to see if this is nice and carbonated yet did you hear that there was a little bit of a up oh yeah so this has been sitting with the strawberries doing the second ferment getting nice and bubbly for two days now, and there's some nice carbonation in there. Oh yeah, that's good. The strawberries, these are homegrown strawberries that I freeze dried. There's some good bubbling. Okay, I'm gonna do something that I wouldn't recommend you do, but this way you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Do you see all those bubbles? That is beautiful. Beautiful, natural carbonation. Mm. Josh is gonna love this. I do need to put this in the refrigerator. We do prefer it to be nice and cold. The reason I am using this style bottle instead of a flip top one, which is what you probably normally see people do who make kombucha at home, is I don't like those because they're hard to clean. And the wide mouth bottles are a lot easier to clean. So this, look at that. That's so exciting. So I'm gonna put those in the fridge so we can enjoy some nice cold kombucha with dinner tonight. While that's melting, we can prepare our nine by 13 pan. I'm out of cooking spray, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of avocado oil and use a pastry brush, and I'm gonna grease the bottom of a nine by 13 baking dish. Now it says to take 17 graham crackers and line the bottom of this baking dish, which that seems like a lot of graham crackers, but we'll see. Are you supposed to overlap them? Because that's two, four, six, because I can completely line the bottom of this baking dish with two, four, six, eight graham crackers. Am I supposed to do a double layer? Hmm. Seems weird to do a double layer. Place 17 graham cracker squares in the pan so that it covers the bottom and set aside. 17 graham cracker squares. This is not a square, this is a rectangle. Is that a square? So that would be two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. I could look this website back up <laughs> and look at the notes but I think we're just gonna go with that. I think we're going to line it like that, set that aside, and now we need crushed graham crackers. It says we need a half a cup of crushed graham crackers. So this is easier to know exactly how much. We have our melted butter. To our melted butter, we are supposed to add 
a half a cup of white sugar, half a cup of brown sugar, vanilla, one egg. And we're supposed to mix this together until just combined. It said do not over mix this mixture. Now we're going to add one, and one quarter cup all-purpose flour, a half teaspoon of baking soda, a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, then we mix this together. Oh, we also need a half cup of crushed graham crackers. Next, we're going to add one cup of mini marshmallows and a half cup of chocolate chips, and we need a half cup for the top, so I'm going to measure those out right now. Set that there, and then we will mix all of this together. I do want to give this a good mix because I want all of the goodies to be nicely incorporated. I think that's enough chocolate. I decided to bake these in this oven because this is an electric oven and the other oven is a propane oven. It says to bake them for 12 to 15 minutes and do not over bake or they won't be soft and chewy. And of course we want a soft and chewy s'mores cookie bar. So these are gonna be for the landscapers tomorrow probably. They showed up today and with the snow they weren't able to work today, which is fine. So I'm going to bake these up and then I am going to hang out with my mom a little bit later this afternoon. And I probably will bring a couple to her as long as they turn out. Because she was telling me that my nephew wanted to make some sort of something with marshmallow. And so she wants this recipe if it turns out. So I'll bring her a sample so she can try it. And then maybe they will make it together. It does say when I take this out of the oven, I can put Hershey bars on top. I have Hershey bars, but I think I'm going to skip that because there it seems like there's plenty of chocolate on there and I don't want it to be too chocolate heavy because s'mores have a good balance between marshmallow and chocolate. Oh, I need to set a timer. Let's see. Let's do that. And then I'm going to clean my mess up. I thought that these were going to take a while to bake because a lot of times bars can take a good 30, 45 minutes to bake. And then we would go out and address the freeze dryer, but I think that I will just have time to basically clean up my mess and then I don't want to over bake these. I have two separate recipes here. So yes, I just need to bake for 12 to 14 minutes until top is lightly golden brown. Marshmallows are lightly toasted. Do not over bake or the bars will not be soft and chewy. If desired, press Hershey bar rectangles immediately on after baking. And then this is for white chocolate. <laughs> these are the, the directions for a white chocolate cranberry cookie that I also printed on January 9th and I never ended up making. I have a stack in my office of recipes that I print off that I wanna try and I'm excited to get to these. So of course, I've got a mess I gotta clean up and I gotta get this kombucha in the fridge. I wanna do that now because I want this cold for dinner. I am excited to have some kombucha, homemade kombucha, back in the rotation. I've got another gallon over there brewing. Josh and I love kombucha. I got out of the habit of making it, and then I started buying it because I wasn't drinking it very much. And it can get kind of expensive. In my grocery store, they're up to $4 a bottle now, and I can make kombucha for pennies on the dollar. So 
that's what we're doing. We're going to get back in the habit. What I used to do when I would do second ferments with kombucha is I would put it into a whole separate vessel. I would add my fruit or whatever flavorings I want. So I would brew my kombucha for a week and a half, two weeks. I would pour the brewed kombucha into a second vessel along with fruit or whatever I was wanting to flavor it with. I would let it sit in that for two to three days, get the flavor, and then I would bottle it and get the carbonation, close the lid and let it ferment. But that's an extra step that takes it's extra washing, it's extra manpower, and so that's why I like those bottles with the wide mouth, because I can put the fruit, do the second ferment all in one step, and it's easy to clean. When you use the sweet top bottle, which is what I used to use all the time, they were not easy to clean, and so I didn't want to put fruit and goodies into that and do the second ferment like that, because they were hard to clean. And so the only time I would flavor and do a second ferment in the bottles is if I was doing fruit juice. And that's another way to do it. So you can do fruit juice and then you don't have to worry about the cleaning step. But I really like those bottles. And you don't even have to buy the ones that I have. Just save if you have kombucha that you'd like to buy at the GT brand. They have the, the wide mouth you can reuse those. I used those for years and years, just reused kombucha bottles that had kombucha from the store. I'm just cleaning up my mess here and we'll get all of this cleaned up so we can head out into the grow room and the freeze dryer room and deal with that disaster of a mess that I found myself in. With this bag of marshmallows, I just cut the bag where I have two tails, like this, and then I'm going to tie that together, and I will just store this in the pantry like this. I will need to find, maybe we'll have to make, or we'll get to make next week for the landscapers, we could make some Rice Krispie treats or something so these don't go stale, but that way I don't have to then put them in another bag. Right before the, the taco soup is done, about a half an hour or an hour before, I'm gonna put a block of cream cheese in it. I like to add that to it just because it makes it a little bit creamy and adds some yummy flavor. And these are cold from the store. So I'm going to just keep one of these blocks out and kind of let that come up to room temperature. That way, when I put it in the crock pot, it will dissolve and melt a little bit better. What I really want to do is get out and deal with the freeze dryer because it's something I've been putting off and I want to go deal with it because I'm mentally prepared to take care of it today. But I figured I better get the kitchen clean while those bars are baking because I am prone to forgetting about things and burning them. <laughs> so I'm going to get the kitchen cleaned. I'm just going to wipe the counters and then I do do a quick sweep on the floors. And that way when I'm done with our other projects and after I'm done hanging out with my mom this afternoon, I can just come home to a clean kitchen. I'm just preparing there the cream cheese that I'm going to put in the soup later today. I will also package up these onions. So I have some pre-diced onions in the fridge next time I need them. And I'm really excited about our next project. Oh my goodness, friends. <laughs> this was so easy. You can see the marshmallows are a little bit toasty. And oh my goodness, it smells so good. I don't think I'm gonna have it bake anymore because it clearly stated on the recipe you do not want to over bake it. Let's see what the bottom looks like. It is kind of odd that there's graham crackers on the bottom. I've never cooked anything like that. I would think that graham crackers would get kind of dried out, but we'll see when we cut into it. That is so cool. I know I make cookies all the time. I don't really like making cookies. I prefer making cookie bars, and so this was fantastic. We need to let this cool before we put it, before we cut into it. So I'm just gonna set it here and we'll let this cool while we go deal with the freeze dryer. We are out in the grow room slash freeze dry room. The last thing I freeze dried was broth. Turned out perfect. I set it on the defrost cycle. If you are new to freeze drying, what happens is the moisture in the food 
gets vacuumed out of the food and there becomes a huge ice ring that comes and forms around the outside of the tube in the freeze dryer. Well, when you defrost it, there's a defrost mode and you're supposed to have the door shut. I never then came back and opened the door. I guess I always open the door every time I freeze dry something. I never thought about this before. The other day I was just walking by and I looked and I saw this on my freeze dryer and I thought that's weird. What is that? I take a closer look and it is all moldy on the inside of my freeze dryer, which is absolutely disgusting. And I have never had this problem before. I tried Googling it. I didn't find many. I, I tried finding um, people that have had the same problem on YouTube and I didn't, I didn't find anything. I probably could have reached out to the rep, but I did research how to clean it. I found videos on how to clean it. So we're just gonna clean this really good. We're gonna sterilize it. And I honestly thought it doesn't smell very good. I honestly thought that I ruined my freeze dryer. I don't think I ruined my freeze dryer. I just think it needs some tender loving care. And from now on, every time I freeze dry, after I do the defrost cycle, I will open the door and let it air dry out completely. I, I don't remember, I should, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some research. <laughs> so while I clean this, I will do some research and figure out, because I'm sure it's my problem, like my fault, whatever I did caused this problem. I want to go back inside. I wanna get some gloves. I wanna get some different cleaning equipment and things to sanitize and I, obviously I'm not gonna be sterilizing my freeze dryer, but I am wanting to do a serious sanitize. And it's probably a good thing to do before food preservation season anyway. What I wanna to use to sanitize my freeze dryer is some vinegar. I've got some gloves because honestly it's gross and I don't want to touch it. These are not the best gloves there. So I'm gonna grab a couple pair and then I'm gonna grab some rags because I want to scrub it and I want to be able to just throw these right in the washing machine. What else do we need? And then we will move on to, oh, I just sprayed. My sink has a hot water tank under it, so this water gets really, really hot. And then we will move to the vinegar. So we're gonna scrub it with hot soapy water and then we will run it with vinegar. And then I'm gonna get some washcloths and we'll use that. We also can scrub the shelves, so we'll do that too. To be honest, this is kind of embarrassing because it is so gross, but I thought I would share it with you because I guess it's the reality of what can happen if you have a freeze dryer. And I did have a panic moment. A freeze dryer is a huge investment and it's the last thing that I wanna do would be to ruin it. And I don't think I did. I think it just needs some tender loving care. Oh, friends, let me show you what I did here. I'm so happy with it. So we organized this kitchen and we got these organizers over here. And then this one, because I don't use a ton of Ziploc bags, I actually put some gloves in there. So that is now a glove holder and a Ziploc bag holder. I did that after we were done organizing and I thought that is perfect for me. So I'm gonna grab all my rags, our warm soapy water, our gloves, I can do this without spilling, and our vinegar. I'll meet you out there. So I lost one of the rags into the soapy water, which is fine because we need it in the soapy water anyway. So I'll just stick those in there. Put this here. Get our gloves on. I almost want to wear a mask because I think it's gross. <laughs> These are not the best gloves. They are not nitrile. I don't know what they are, but they rip really easily. So I am going to put two on. Friends, I'm scared to do this. Ugh. Ugh, it's so gross. Okay. So it doesn't smell very good. So the first thing is this ring comes off. So I'm gonna bring this inside and we're gonna scrub this in the sink. I'm gonna set that up there. Once you take that off, 
then this whole thing comes out. This is so gross. So this is going to be scrubbed inside too. And there is a little cord back here that needs to be unplugged. And we're just going to stick that cord here because I don't want anything, I don't want any water to get down that cord. So we're just going to put that there. And we're going to bring this inside to give this a scrub. And this inside. But before I scrub these, I'm going to set them down and I'm going to scrub the inside of that. Let's just say this is a good thing that this is being done. I'm glad we're getting to it before harvest season. Gross, this is mold down here. Okay, that already looks better, but we've got a long way to go. So I did do research after I cleaned this, and yes, when you are done running your freeze dryer and you run your defrost cycle, then you do wanna keep the door open so it can air dry. I don't know how I totally missed that step. I clearly wasn't missing it because I've never had this issue of mold before, but I did more research, and yes, this is a common problem that can happen if you don't open the door after it's done because you're just trapping moisture in there. And so here I'm using vinegar to sanitize the inside. I did more research on this and this is definitely the preferred method. You don't want to use any chemicals that are harsh that you wouldn't want to consume because you're going to be putting food that you're going to eat in the freeze dryer. And another option that people use to clean the inside of their freeze dryer, this drum, is they use a clear alcohol if you want. So you could use vodka, uh, tequila that's clear or gin or something like that. But vinegar is way more affordable. And so that's what I did here. So I'm also taking some vinegar and wiping down that cord. I'm cleaning the door really well, both the inside and the outside. And I do end up pouring vinegar. I have the, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. This is a valve. You want this valve open because I'm going to be pouring vinegar down the back side of the freeze dryer and it's going to run through this tube and into the bucket where I collect water and I want to not only sanitize the inside of the freeze dryer but I thought that I should go ahead and just run totally 100% concentrate vinegar down the tube to help kind of clean out the tube as well. I don't end up scrubbing the inside of that tube because that tube was open to air and so I just run the vinegar down through it. And I did that a few times. This is something I am going to start implementing into my care of my freeze dryer at least twice a year, if not quarterly. I think it's gonna be a good practice just to get into the habit of it. I was super intimidated about this process and that's one reason why I have kind of put this off. But you can see just how easy it is. It's really not complicated. I think the reason it just feels so intimidating is because it is such a big investment that the last thing I would want to do is ruin it while through the cleaning process. But now that I've done it once, it's it's not intimidating. It's really easy. It's just like changing the oil. I thought changing the oil was going to be super complicated and difficult, but it was really, really easy. And once I did it one time, I, I have no fears about doing it because it's just super, super easy. If you yourself are interested in a freeze dryer, they are on sale for the month of May. They rarely ever run sales, so I can link the freeze dryer that I have down below. I have a medium sized freeze dryer. If I was to purchase a freeze dryer today, I would probably purchase a large one because it doesn't, it's not that much more of an investment to get a large and you get way more capacity for freeze drying. So that's just personally what I would do but I'll link the one that I have. I have the medium size, which has four trays, and I have the premier pump. So you need to change the oil about every 40 to 60 uses. It tells you when the oil needs to be changed. You can't upgrade to a, a oilless pump, and it is quite a bit upgrade. I wouldn't do that because, like I said, 
the changing the oil is super easy. I was intimidated by it the first time, but once I've done it one time, it's so easy. So here I'm washing the tray portion. I wanted to get these extremely clean. So this took me a good 20 minutes or so. I really took the time to make sure I really got every nook and cranny and then I dried it out really well. And the back side, I, I was because this is where the cord attaches, I tried very hard not to get that wet. I didn't want to get the cord wet. After I washed this with soap and water, I did run vinegar through the whole thing so that it would have a chance to help sterilize or sanitize it. So here we go. That was not as intimidating as I thought it was going to be. I'm just putting it all back together so it will be ready to use next time we want to use it. It is as good as new. Now it smells like pickles in here because of the vinegar. I'm gonna let everything just completely air dry just like this. I've got my valve open. I'm going to dump this vinegar just because I don't want it to smell like vinegar in here as, well, as little as possible. So we're just gonna let this air dry. It looks so good. I mean, it smells good. I like the smell of pickles. I like the smell of vinegar. It compared to what it was smelling like, I think we are as good as new. So it was that easy. So let me take care of this and then I want to clean up this grow room. It is looking sad. So since I have about a half an hour uh, before I need to head and um, meet my mom, I am going to take some time to go ahead and get this grow room cleaned up. But first I'm going to take care of my mess here. I have been cleaning my grow room about once every week, even though it's kind of silly because it just gets messy again. But it, I really enjoy being in here more when it's clean, and that's why I take the effort to go ahead and clean. So let me take care of this. We'll be back and we'll get this grow room under control. So here's the before. It's super dirty. I do have my fans off just while we're in here. I need to water some of my seedlings, so I need to refill that. But there is just literal dirt on the floor. My counter is a disaster. We need to deal with this. I've got coffee mugs that need to be taken care of and we can just spruce this area up a little bit so that it's a little bit more enjoyable to work in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to vacuum all the dirt up that's on the floor. So I do go through and I vacuum all the dirt off the floor and I do clean off my countertop and I don't vacuum that up. I just sweep that into a corner or into my hand and I put it back in the soil container because we will reuse that soil. But I get everything vacuumed and clean and I emptied the garbage. You can see that there. I love having a garbage can in this space because it's surprising how many things I end up needing to throw away in here. And it's just really convenient. And it has helped kind of keep this area a little bit tidier for me. This has been such a huge blessing having this space. The last three years when I started seeds, I started them in my kitchen and then they lived in my living room while they grew up until they were ready to go out into the garden. And so having the this space where I can start my seedlings has just been a huge, huge blessing. I didn't even think of this as being what it could be when we purchased this house. And I'm just really grateful for this space. So I just used my husband's shop vac to vacuum up the floor. If we end up, because the greenhouse might be a year, a couple years down, down the road before we can build a greenhouse, I would say if, yeah, it's probably going to be two years before that would even, we would start the planning on that. And so I'm just really grateful to have this. But long term, I think what I would like to do is probably remove this carpet. It's going to be a little bit of a project to remove the carpet because it was glued down but I think it would be easier to be able to sweep this floor instead of having to vacuum the floor. So you can see I'm watering in my plants. These are my zinnias. I had to restart my zinnias because the first round never germinated. And then I did go ahead and turn the fans back on to help have our seedlings be nice and strong. Wow, it looks and feels so much better in here. I know it might seem silly to clean this up knowing that it's probably gonna get dirty again, but just being in here, I enjoy it so much more when it's vacuumed. <laughs> so here is the after. I have the fans turned back on so that we get the air movement. 
I honestly don't know if we need to use the heat mats anymore this year, so we'll just see. These are probably going to start being planted out next week, and over here looks a lot better. I put in here my compost and stuff that I can make my soil blocks with and or use my seeding trays to start more seeds if I need to start more seeds. I got the, well I got one fan on, I got the dish, or not dishwasher, why is that fan not turning on? Oh I unplugged it. I got the washing machine going with some towels, all those towels that I used to clean the freeze dryer. Um, I wanted to go ahead and just get those washing. I now have both fans on. I'm going to go, oh, and this huge, huge, huge accomplishment. Just being in here too and having that clean feels really great. I was kind of, it, when I was in here, I knew that that was a problem for the last couple of weeks and I've just been kind of ignoring it. And uh, you know, when you have that thing that's just like nagging you in the back of the your head where it's harder to enjoy something because you know that that needs to be dealt with. Well, I'm glad today was the day we dealt with it. I just washed my hands really, really good because we're gonna cut into these bars. I'm gonna go meet my mom here in a couple minutes and I wanna bring her some so her and my dad can enjoy them. Let's see. I'm meeting her at my sister's house, so I think I'm gonna bring enough for, look at that. <laughs> oh my goodness, friends. I think I'm gonna bring enough for her and I'll leave some at my sister's house. My sister's not home. My mom is hanging out with my nieces and nephews. So I think I want to bring enough for them to leave there so my, my brother-in-law and my sister can enjoy it. I greased the bottom, but it's definitely stuck. So this might not be the prettiest bar. Oh no, it's just like a pie. The first one doesn't want to come up. There we go. Okay, look at that. So these bars want to break where the graham crackers break. These aren't going to be the prettiest things per se, but we'll give it a taste test. I think it's going to taste good. And friends, the sun has come out. Almost all that snow has melted and it's absolutely beautiful. And I probably could have worked out there this afternoon, but I think I'm going to tomorrow. As long as it doesn't snow, I am going to work out there tomorrow. So here we go. The crunch from the graham cracker is so good. I just ate a toasted marshmallow. You can see the graham crackers on the bottom. It's basically like a graham cracker crust with, you know what would almost be better than, than just putting a whole graham cracker to make an actual graham cracker crust because the graham cracker on the bottom kind of is a little bit dry. And so if you made a graham cracker crust you know, with the butter and you baked it and had it hard, or you probably wouldn't even need to bake it because you bake it in the oven. But this is so good. I don't even really like marshmallows, but because they get all toasty, you're not getting that like marshmallow texture, which is what I don't like. I'm gonna go bring these to my mom and leave a bunch at my sister's. And then I have plenty here to serve to the landscapers tomorrow because I'm sure with how nice it is, let's go outside. It is out there now that they'll be able to be here tomorrow and then I'll be able to work out here tomorrow because it's nice and warm out here. Well, warm probably is an exaggeration, <laughs> but the snow is melted and I don't think it's supposed to snow tomorrow. I think it's, I mean, it was supposed to be 55 today and 67 tomorrow. So let's see what it says. Weather report. It says 51 tomorrow, 53 Friday, 53 Saturday. So as long as it's nice, I will be out here tomorrow. I got some big plans. My onions should be arriving any day now. They have shipped. I ordered onion starts, which are like little onion plants. And then I'll show you what dinner looks like when I throw dinner together. Don't mind the messy porch. That is another project for another day. I have come to the conclusion <laughs> that it is very difficult for me to have my entire life organized and clean at one time. 
areas of my life have to take turns and right now my kitchen's clean my freeze dryer's clean and my grow room is clean so when we get back we will finish up dinner but that's just going to sit there for the rest of the day it's many many hours later i spent quite a few hours at my with my mom at my sister's house she was helping me with the project with the baby and we had a great time she enjoyed the dessert josh is home now from a couple errands he ran this afternoon. So now we're gonna have dinner. I wish that, it's seven o'clock now. I got this on, I think, what did I say? It was like noon, 12.30 or something. I wish that I had gotten it on in the morning, but it's okay. Just tasting it for flavor. It's really good, but it needs a little bit more salt. It's got a nice heat to it, and I'm not sure where the heat's coming from, because I didn't add anything that I thought was spicy, so maybe that home canned salsa. We haven't had that in quite some time. I did put those two pinches of red pepper, I guess, in it. Tomorrow, it's not supposed to snow and it's not supposed to rain. So if that is indeed the case, then I am gonna spend as much time outside as possible. So this will be perfect for dinner tonight and then I can just reheat it in the crock pot and we can have it for dinner tomorrow. That's really good. That's all it needed. A little bit more salt. And then to serve with this, I have our bag of 90 cent chips, which I'm so happy about that find. And then we've got some sour cream to top it, our pre-shredded cheese. When I was done in the kitchen, I just took the frozen cheese, stuck it in the fridge, and now it's thawed and it's perfect. It's just like buying store-bought shredded cheese, but the quality is better because I chose what cheese I wanted shredded and it doesn't have that coating and I think it just tastes a lot better. And then the last thing, I have some peach hot sauce that I will put on mine. I don't know if Josh will put that on his, but I will. And then Josh and I will share a kombucha for dinner tonight. And he hasn't had kombucha, homemade kombucha in quite some time. Let's see. Oh gosh, I tightened this one way too tight, I guess. This is a different one than the one I opened earlier. Oh yeah, there we go. Look at that. Beautiful. I'm gonna have Josh come in here and try our kombucha. So I'm gonna strain out the fruit. Josh just came in here, so he's gonna give this a try. It's been a long time since we've had homemade kombucha around here. Look at that. Look at the bubbles on that. This is strawberry kombucha from our strawberries that I freeze dry. Oh, that's awesome. Smells good. Oh yeah, that's good. Is it good? That's some strawberry flavor there. I know, I only put four strawberries in each one of these containers and the flavor, the homegrown strawberries or the local strawberries are where it's at. I'm gonna freeze dry a lot of strawberries this summer. It's got really good carbonation too. Mm -hmm. Nice, I don't want more of this for sure. Well, there's more where it came from. And then I have a whole nother gallon. All of the kombucha that I made with this last gallon is strawberry flavor. So we have taco soup for dinner. Josh and I are gonna enjoy a dinner. We will be back tomorrow in the kitchen, or not in the kitchen, we will be back tomorrow in the garden, hopefully. First time working out in the garden together. I cannot wait. If you enjoyed this, I can pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.